So if you've been following along in the Power BI Embedded playlist, by now you would have already registered an Azure AD application, as well as starting to set up your environment by provisioning some Power BI Embedded dedicated capacity in Azure, and then relating that into your app workspace with some content. So that might be published via the Power BI Desktop tool, or maybe you've just grabbed some sample content from the Power BI service. In this video, we're going to be focusing on getting our embed token. So what is an embed token? This is something that's required by the front end where we're going to have our JavaScript tapping into that Power BI JavaScript library in order to embed any content from Power BI. So the actual embed token comes from the Power BI API. And if you want to embed, whether it be a dashboard or a report in its entirety, or whether it's just the tile on its own, each piece of content requires an embed token in order to be embedded within our web application. So this is where Azure Functions come in. We're gonna have a slab of code that is running as an Azure function that will invoke the Power BI API in order to get that embed token and return that as a JSON response to the front end. Now, if you don't know what Azure Functions is, it's basically serverless compute. Um, it's in Azure. It, it, I'd read up on the documentation, but it just basically keep things live for the demo rather than us having to spin up a you know web server backend or um, have a VM running in the background. So in terms of the high level flow, we'll have the initial request coming from the browser that will call the Azure function as essentially acting as an API because it will be HTTP triggered. Then that Azure function is going to authenticate with our Power BI Pro account. This authentication will happen against Azure AD, that application that we registered at the beginning, and if successful, there'll be an access token that's returned. With that access token, we'll then be able to invoke the Power BI API, and we'll get a number of bits of pieces of critical information that we need in order to construct our JSON res response, but the most important of them all is that embed token. And once that JSON response comes back, the HTML that includes some JavaScript will end up rendering our web content. So the first thing that we need to do is go over to the Azure portal and create our function app. So a function app, it acts as a container for the functions themselves. You can have multiple functions within a single function app. So we'll go over and create our function app, give it a valid name. valid subscription, pick a resource group, leave the OS as Windows, hosting plan as consumption plan, pick a location um, that matches the location potentially of your resource group. Um, storage, we'll just let it create some new storage and we won't um, turn on application insights. So I've already actually created my function app, but you can go ahead and, and create that and then we'll create our actual function. So if I head over to my function application, So I've already got a function ready to go, but to create a new one, you just hover over this functions um, line and we'll click on add. And you can see all the different types of functions that you can create. Now, the one that we want for this demo is the HTTP trigger, because we want to call our function just using a HTTP URL, and we're going to pick C sharp. So if we click on that, we can just provide it that name. So I've called mine get embed token. Now, mine already exists, but if, um, otherwise you're just going to make sure. So we're going to use C-sharp as language, give you your HTTP triggered function a name, and then click on create. So once you've done that, we'll open up our actual function where we can start to put in some code. Okay, so you can see here that there's some sample code um, that basically it's a post request has something that's being passed in the, um, in the body. If you hit run, um, you'll see that the function's already working, but obviously it doesn't have the code that we want. So we want to override all this code with what will ultimately tap into the Power BI API and get our embed token. So if you head over to the blog, there are a number of um, application variables that we want to create that our code will end up calling on. So these are those application variables here. We've got the client ID, group ID, report ID, username, password. So the client ID you can get from Azure AD, if you open up your app, 
um, it's the application ID. So this is the same ID that you would have seen during the initial app registration, uh, but if you didn't make a note of it, then you can always get it again uh, within Azure Active Directory. Now the group ID and the report ID, you can get from powerbi.com. So if you just go to the app workspace and open up your report, the URL should be in a, in a format similar to this one below, where you've got powerbi.com slash groups, then there'll be the group ID within the URL and the report ID as well. So if you grab those, we're essentially hard coding those within our application um, settings. Obviously in a real world scenario, you could programmatically get your group ID and report ID depending on what the requirements are of your particular application. Uh, but again, to keep things simple, we're gonna specify a sp specific group and report. And then lastly, we've got the PBOE username and password. That's your Power BI Pro account. So the same account that you've probably logged into um, to the Azure portal with. Um, and so with that way, we're not keeping the username and password within the code itself. It's just set as an application setting. So I'll go over and start creating these and then we'll skip over um, to the video. So when it's, with it's all complete. So to get to application settings, you go um, to one level up, click on app settings. And you can see there's already a number of things in the config. You just click on add new, set your name and start to put your values. So um, I'll skip ahead once this is all finished. Okay, so we're back. I've populated all my um, property values. Once you're done, you're just going to make sure you scroll back up and click on save. And once you've saved, now we can start to put our code in. So we'll go back to our function. Okay, so the the code that's loaded here in the main window, you can actually see if you open up a few files, that's coming from run.csx. We actually need an additional file in order to um, have the Azure function container install some dependencies for us. So in order to do that, we click on add. This file will need to be called project.json. So if you go over to the blog, you can see I've got the project.json here. We can just copy and paste that in. and click on save. Okay, so that would have installed our dependencies. And then if we go back to run, and we'll copy and paste the code. Just override everything, click save. So it looks like I had some issues there with the function app container picking up the pen dependencies. Um, I haven't changed the code one bit. All I've done is just restart the function app. So if you do hit the same problem, um, you can head over to the parent, hit stop, hit start, go back to your um, your function, and we'll just and it should compile fine. So you, we can check it here again once it loads. So if we just change a single character, hit save. Um, you should see that the function compiles fine. And that's it. Um, because of all our variables, they're stored in our application settings, all the other code um, doesn't need to be changed. So if you wanted to test this, you click on get function URL, hit copy, and this is essentially your API that you can call within the browser. So if we punch our URL in, and we check the response, you can see we've got our JSON. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So we'll just head back over and walk through the code. Um, so at the top here, we're just importing our dependencies around the Power BI API and some system libraries. Here we're getting all our variable values and the most important ones are the ones that are contained within the application settings. And then here's the body of our function. So at the top here, all that, that all those, those couple of lines are doing is authenticating our Power BI Pro account with Azure AD. So if authentication is successful, we'll get back that access token, and then we can use that access token to initiate a Power BI client object. With the Power BI client, then we can get things like our embed URL and get our embed token. Once we've got those key pieces of information, then we start to construct our JSON response. So you can see the format of the JSON there. We've got our token, our URL, and a report ID. 
and then we return that back. And that's pretty much it. So that's your API in order to generate an embed token. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at the final step in terms of bringing it all together, which is just some really basic, simple HTML code, which will call our Azure function uh, with a bit of Ajax and embed the Power BI content so you can see it coming through end to end.